I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, we can. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Myself, Pooja, and I'm associated with Desapex as a project engineer. And we also have Mr. Abhay Nayak, digital design manager. He will be explaining about the main topic of this webinar, that is global standards for implementing BIM in construction projects. Before starting to our webinar, I'm going to brief about agenda of webinar. I am going to introduce about Desapex and Abhay will be explaining about overview of building information modeling. What is the BIM process for various stages of the project life cycle? What are the different global standards that are used in the implementation of BIM? and implementation of global standards for delivery phase of the asset, that is ISO 19650. Let me start with the introduction of Desapex. Desapex is a digital engineering organization working towards digital technology integration in the AC industry to improve the life cycle of the built assets, where we provide complete digital solutions throughout the life cycle of the building or infrastructure that is design, construction, and operation. Desapex aims at creating a sustainable built environment by enabling digital adoption and integration of technology for target value design. We are headquartered at Silicon Valley of India, that is Bangalore, and we are also operating at three major cities in India, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Hobli. And also, we are serving our clients across the globe. And these are some customer segments which we are serving, starting from hotels and restaurants, corporate real estate, residentials, etc. So wherever there is a capital expenditure and operational expenditure involved, we provide digital solutions over there. The construction industry is facing multiple challenges in the digital transformation era. Majorly, uh, poor coordination between the stakeholders and design complications arising midway during the construction can cause poor productivity. 2D drawings can cause miscommunication between the stakeholders and difficulty in rich visualization content such as animation, rendering, etc. Running projects without good project management is a false economy, so it's often thought to be an unnecessary burden on the budget. The facility data is not properly transformed to the client at the time of the handover. If the data is lost with the passage of the time, then it is very difficult to retrieve for maintenance and renovation. Lack of standards and regulations can dissolve the tragedy caused by fire, structural collapse, and also general deteriorations. Sustainability can be one of the most challenging aspects of this industry. And it also contributes with 11% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. I would like to brief about the digital solutions we are providing to our clients, which are the three verticals of Desapex, digital design management, digital project management, and digital asset management. Under the digital design management, uh, we provide the solutions like clash detection and coordination, architecture, structure, MEP of modeling, and BIM-based pre-construction services. So we manage the design under the digital framework for the designs, which are already authored by the consultants. So under the digital project management, we are providing our clients to manage their const construction projects digitally, where we provide digital information delivery plan, technical due diligence, and setting up digital lab. Under the digital asset management, we assist our clients to digitize their project documents in terms of the latest as built 2D drawings and also 3D BIM models. So we actually digitalize the existing physical building like the buildings are after the handover stage or during the operational stage. We have an integrated tool called Granulan Manager and we are partnered with this Finnish company Granulan to provide the solutions like BIM for facility management, in which we provide maintenance management, energy management, asset management, and also real estate portfolio management services as well. 
Regarding digital twin using reality capture, we build as-built models by using laser scanning technology. That model can be further used for as-built verification and documentation and also con construction progress monitoring. Let's go through some case studies uh, of our projects where integration of technology and digitalization provided great outcome to our clients to meet their desired results. In one of our project where the BIM model development and drawing production for one of the biggest mall in Malaysia with an approximate area of 10 million square feet, the building had 14 services that were to be coordinated and the layouts were produced for coordinated layouts as per the client requirement. The team was highly enthusiastic and hardworking towards every deliverable and the coordinated models and layouts were delivered with the utmost quality and standards. We have worked as a BIM consultant for a leading electronic manufacturing company with a multiple buildings for approximate area of 600,000 square feet. So we coordinated with the various stakeholders and made sure that all services were clash free with the supporting elements for LOD 400. Then the site is scanned with the laser scanners after the erection of all services and the model will be updated to LOD 500 as per the site conditions for utilization of the model for facility management services. The scan to beam solutions were provided for an ongoing commercial building of a banking sector with an area of 800,000 square feet. So as a DDM consultant, we also checked for site deviations in structural and firefighting layouts. So for as built model coordination and also with the upcoming building services. So the digital solutions for virtual walkthrough of the same ongoing project were also provided for progress reporting purpose. And our approach is uh, we have developed the team capable of integrating design construction parameters into the digital information model. So which blends expertise in domain process and tools and provides owner an unmatched performance and also quality project on time. And this is our young passionate team and we have civil, mechanical, electrical, architectures and BIM engineers, which is under the leadership of Mr. Srinidhi and Mr. Varun Kumar. And this part is USP of Desapex and I feel very proud to say that we are the first company in world and only company in India to have this kite mark from British Standard Institutes, so which is a global standards for BIM. So it is IS 19650 part one and part two. And this is our today's webinar discussion. The word DESAPEX means the combination of two words, design and apex. So apex means the highest point. So we design for a highest quality at the highest end. So this is all about Desapex portfolio. Uh, I would like to hand over now to Abhay who will discuss regarding global standards for implementing BIM in construction projects. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pooja. So I'm going to uh, share my screen now. Kindly let me know if you are able to see my screen. You able to see my screen, Pooja? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Abhay Nayak, and I'm associated with Desapex as a digital design manager. I work with my team to understand client requirements prepare a project plan and deliver the project as per the plan schedule. During my career, I had the privilege to see the different methodologies followed in project management, particularly in applying the BIM framework. Today, I would like to share with you some of my experience associated with the standards that are available for BIM-based construction projects. BIM provides architects, engineers, and construction professionals with the ability to plan, design, and manage building projects more efficiently, creating the need for an international framework that allows the industry to work together at the international level. BIM supports 
at all stages of the project life cycle starting from the programming of the project where we can create multiple options and compare it while the conceptual and detailed design stage of the project for building analysis like energy efficiency and efd analysis to create construction and fabrication documents bim can be used to create 4d simulation by linking the master schedule to the model for 5d simulation which helps for financial planning while the construction phase of the project for construction logistics planning for building operation and maintenance and also while the demolition stage bim processes will be very helpful we will now discuss some of the standards which are used worldwide and published by the international standards organization or iso it is important we adapt to such international standards as they are globally accepted iso is a international organization that focuses on creating standards iso has a technical committee for each topic of area it has participating members from across the globe who work together with the organization to collect information arrange them and test it before the standard is published iso has already published a lot of standards for organization and digitization of information about building and civil engineering works including building information modeling bim iso 19650 series and information management standard was developed on the basis of the tried and tested british standard bs 1192 and publicly available specification pas 1192 part 2 which had proven results showing an increase in productivity this allowed us to smoothly transition into iso standards and incorporate the new processes into our project delivery in 2019 post bsi audit of a past projects and client satisfaction survey which includes the auditors meeting our clients desapex was batched with a kite mark for iso 19650 it guides us about processes and documentation which have to be prepared at what stage of the project what information and document should the document should contain methods to store the documents approval and validation of the project related information iso 19650 is divided into six parts the part 1 contains the concepts and principles part 2 contains information related to delivery phase of the asset part 3 the operational phase of the asset part 4 information exchange which is under development part 5 security minded approach to information management part 6 health and safety which is under development so and some of the bim standards for uh, information exchange might be iso 16739 industry foundation classes ifc iso 29481 bim information delivery ma manual iso 12006 framework for object oriented information so iso 19650 part 1 focuses on the core concepts and principles of the information management process it explains the important terms and definitions captured in other parts of 19650 it covers activities to create assets and project related information information requirement at different stages of the project and methods to create them are defined documentation required while the information delivery cycle and how we manage all this information with different teams involved in the project uh, guides us on how to analyze delivery teams capabilities and capacity provides information to create and use different containers for a collaborative working environment explains uh, the need and methods to create an information delivery plan guides us on how to manage collaborative production of information with uh, multiple task teams and about common data environment cde so these are the key concepts covered in iso 1960 part 1 cd we will discuss in detail separately at the end of this webinar so iso 1950 part 
so part 2 which is the main uh, topic for today's webinar describes the delivery phase of the asset guides us on the activities and documents to be created in the delivery phase it outlines individual suppliers responsibility involved in the project while creation of the information explains the exchange information requirement document and key decision points it says the need for a bim execution plan and uh, guidance and contents to create a bim execution plan is explained it says the roles and responsibilities of people involved in the project including the appointing party so these are some of the key points covered in the iso 19650 part 2 so part 3 of iso 19650 describes the activities and documents required during the operational phase of the project so it covers key topics like uh, support and guidance for information management at the operation phase guidance towards managing the processes for the owner or operator guidance towards um, roles and responsibilities regarding asset management defines asset information requirements and information about other bim standards is covered in this part so part 5 of iso 19650 describes the security minded approach to information management covers uh, important topics like strategy to secure the built digital asset security information requirement of a built digital asset the roles and responsibilities of the team involved in development of the information are captured in this part so we will now see a few of the information exchange standards by iso like the iso 16739 the industry foundation class or we call it as ifc it is popular for uh, interoperability of data models so ifc models we can also call them as open source file formats and uh, they are uh, very popular in the industry because they are vendor neutral so it focuses on the interoperability of data produced between, uh, between different bim tools it uh, specifies a data scheme and structure to the exchange file format it includes definition that cover data required for building over their life cycle it identifies data exchange requirements for software application so then we come to iso 12006 so this series talks about classification of information object oriented information exchange while the construction phase of the project so it explains the framework for the development of built environment classification system it identifies a set of classification tables and titles for the range of information object classes allows standardization of information then we move on to iso 29481 so which says about the methodology format uh, maybe interaction classification of information in a bim model so so these are some of the these are some of the information exchange standards by iso so now we come to iso 19650 part 1 so here there is a image uh, where you can see the process involved while the delivery phase of an asset so this is from iso 19650 part 1 on the left hand side you see that the appointing party defines the organization and project information requirements once the information requirements are ready they they appoint other parties who can assist uh, assist them to create the information as per requirement we also call them a delivery team the delivery team creates information deliverables like project information model or asset information model so this is a hierarchy of information requirements in the project so now we move on to our main topic that is iso 19650 part 2 so in every project it has a different stages like to plan and define a scope schedule and tracking of the project 
verification and valid validation of the project. So initially, the requirement of the project is assessed, documented, and an invitation to tender is prepared. Different parties submit their tender responses. The lead appointed party then analyzes the responses and an appointment is made after assessing various criteria like the capacity and uh, the capability of the team. The appointed party then tests the set processes and system and mobilizes the team for collaborative information production. Once the information is ready, the model is uh, submitted for the lead appointed party or the client's authorization. Once the information is uh, authorized, the data is transferred to the archive state. The lessons learned from the project, uh, we capture the lessons learned from the project. So with all this above procedure, we are generating a lot of documents, information, which have to be properly documented. So BIM ISO 19650 supports the team for the management of all the produced in, uh, information in a unified manner. So we will now discuss in detail the steps involved to generate, store, authorize project information as per BIM ISO 19650 part two. It's uh, information management uh, using BIM while the delivery phase of the project. So the first step, assessment and need, the appointing party lists the requirement, which includes organization requirement, project related requirement, asset related requirement, and exchange information requirement. It can be information like project scope, the, the purpose of generating the information and its use, key decision points, et cetera, are documented. So this, uh, the stage also guides us to establish milestones and standards to create the information. Establishes methods and procedures on how to create uh, information, maybe methods to capture existing asset related information, methods to generate or review, approve newly created information. If uh, any project related reference information and resources are readily available, we collate them. So this ensures we do not duplicate uh, the data or spend time generating data which is already available and the information serves as a purpose of reference. It guides us to establish the common data environment which serves the project requirement. Uh, we also establish the information protocol for shared or generated information in the delivery phase of the project. So as a result of all these activities performed at this stage, uh, we create document based on the discussion. So the documents are organization information requirement, OIR, which contains appointing parties, uh, objectives, strategic uh, business operation requirements, asset management requirements, company policies, et cetera. And then we also create another document, which is project information requirement, PIR, which contains project management processes and asset management processes while the design and construction phase of an asset. And the other document is the AIR, Asset Information Requirement, uh, which has the managerial, commercial, technical uh, aspects of producing asset information. And we also record the important project milestones at this stage. So these are the products of the assessment, assessment and need state. So then we come to the invitation to tender stage. So at the invitation to tender stage, the EIR document is established by the lead appointed party. So it is basically a combination of the OIR, PIR and AIR document. And this is used for tendering. So we combine all these three documents and create an EIR. Uh, some reference documents from previous project which uh, translate the requirement are shared by the appointing party. Resources like uh, reference drawing, families uh, are all, sh all are shared. So they are collected. So tender a response requirement and what, what should be the re response for the tender we have raised. So tender response requirements, what are the criteria for evaluation of the tender responses are established. 
and then we compile all this uh, document and prepare a invitation to tender so the next part is tender response so in the tender response a pre appointment pp is submitted as a response to the tender so the selection and configuration of tool uh, what is the data management system what is the file naming convention um, might be a model federation and communication protocols are the key points covered in a, a pre appointment beam execution plan so based on the relevant experience the team has uh, how do they manage the information the size of the team involved for information production methods and procedures adopted for the generation of model and the it infrastructure so these are the some of the key points based on which the client team will analyze the capacity and capability of the task team so then we create a mobilization plan risk registers for the project uh, we the risk register basically uh, captures the key points established for information devil, delivery uh, if not delivered as per plan then it would uh, impact the additional cost and time to the project so such uh, topics we capture in the risk register all the tender responses by the delivery team are compiled at the end of this stage so next is the appointment so once the delivery team is appointed so the confirmation on the bep is given it is with the agreement with each appointed party uh, record so it uh, guides to establish the delivery team's high level responsibility matrix so the eir uh, with the lead appointed party eidp midp task information delivery plan master information delivery plans are prepared so basically tidp is a plan which uh, specifies the delivery dates for a specific task team so midp is a combination of all the tidp from the task team so we can uh, consider it as a master schedule so the last uh, part of the appointment will be uh, to complete the lead appointed party and the appointed party's documents like confirmation on the tidp's information protocols standards so this will be the last part so then what we do uh, we have set a lot of standards we have set up methods and processes in the previous uh, stages so then we need to test those so that is where we do in the mobilization stage so in the mobilization stage we check the set methods and processes the resources are mobilized on the project the information uh, technology needs such as procurement of any software configuration uh, testing of hardware and software are done the uh, information production methods and procedures are tested and updated so that they meet the project requirement this stage we call it as mobilization and then we start generating collaborative information so initially in the collaborative information production the task team checks what information is readily available which was shared while invitation to tender stage so to make sure that we do not duplicate the data so they will check what are the resources available then we start generating the required information as per the set standards and procedures to the detail of requirement the quality check of the information is done by the task team once the information passes the quality check it is uh, shared for authorization and approval so the next uh, stage is information model uh, delivery of model all the task team submit their information model to the lead appointed party for authorization within the project cd so the information model is then reviewed and authorized for the methods and procedures the model is also shared with the appointing party for the final authorization the approval will be based on the midps eir acceptation acceptance criteria uh, of information or the level of information requirement so based on this the model is approved and authorized 
So then the last part is the project closeout. So as part of project closeout, we archive the project information model, which can be used for the later stages of the project, like for asset management, facility management. The lessons learned from the project are captured along with the lead appointed party and appointing party. This is very important because it will give us a great value for the future projects. So with all the above procedure, we are generating a lot of documents information which have to be properly documented. So how do we digitally manage all the information? BIM ISO 19650 supports the management of all the produce information in a unified manner. The common data environment or CD section translates the need for storage of information at a container level like work in progress, shared, published, and archived. These containers help for information development, review, approval, and authorization of information created during the delivery phase of the project. So the first stage, the work in progress state, is used for information while it is being developed uh, by its task team. So the information container in this shade should not be visible or accessible to any other task team, particularly important if the CD solution is implemented through a shared server or web portal. So once the information is developed to the required state, it transitions to a shared state. So the information at the shared state enables collaborative development of the information model within a delivery team. These uh, information containers should be visible and accessible, but should not be editable to other task teams. So other task team can use this information for the purpose of uh, coordination with their own information. And if uh, any editing is required, they have to uh, do the review submission with the author returning the information uh, to a work in progress state. It also contains information uh, that has been approved for sharing with the client for the final approval or authorization. So the archive state of information uh, that has been shared and published during the information management process as well as the uh, audit trial uh, while the mobilization stage of development. So the so information previously in a published state represents information that potentially has been used for more detailed design work for asset management, et cetera. So the advantages of adopting such a CD solution and workflow includes uh, responsibilities for the information with uh, each information container remains with the organization that produces it. And although it is shared and reused, only that organization is allowed to change the content. So the shared information containers reduces the time and cost in uh, producing coordinated information. Uh, audit trial of information production is available for use during and uh, after each project delivery and asset management activity. So how does ISO 19650 benefit construction businesses? So BIM can be considered an investment for a company's future. Companies can have an internal audit with a set of questionnaires discussed and uh, documented before a BIM implementation. ISO 19650 provides additional traction to BIM by streamlining the processes of project delivery, which all the stakeholders involved in the project have to follow. With a clear definition of EIR and DEP, it allows the owners and service providers to document the level of information needed in the data exchange. TIDPs, MIDPs allow all stakeholders to be aware of the project milestones and track to keep the project within schedule. Inclusion of classification of object-oriented data allows organization working with teams spread across the globe to have a common language with respect to information exchange. 
following the principles of CDE reduces the risk of data loss, processing time, and use of older versions of data by different teams. A centralized way for storage of information makes sure that all the stakeholders involved in the project are consuming the latest set of data. So this was a brief outline of the BIM ISO 19650. The BIM ISO 19650 is a vast topic and a big picture of the topic was discussed today. Hope the presentation was informative. We will conduct more webinars on ISO where we will have detailed discussion on each stage involved and their importance. We shall take the next five minutes to discuss any questions you might have on the subject. Thank you. So there is a question how ISO 19650 standard help your project. So ISO 19650 basically gives you a framework on from the start of the project till the end, what minimum documents have to be created, what information the document should contain and the importance of creating those documents. Also, it uh, makes sure how do we store all the information and uh, there is no information or data loss. So there is one more question we have. Uh, why we need ISO. So why we need ISO is because it's an international uh, standard organization certified framework. So th there were before different standards which were, uh, we can call it as a classification. It was not a standard. So ISO 19650 brought a framework which is tried and tested and it was uh, adapted. So we can have a really international uh, framework so that if we are working in any global project, so we have a common language across all the projects. So one question is, have you done any projects in USA? Yes, uh, we have done and we are working on few of the projects now on in USA. Thank you so much, Abhay, for sharing this valuable information. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. 
and this is the end of the webinar and we will meet you again soon with some more interesting topics in our industry and we hope to bring more knowledge and awareness of our industry to you thank you thank you everyone